Natalie, thanks very much indeed. Let me move uh, across now. I'm going to move around a bit so I can see them better. Um, it, let's, let's continue looking at the sort of the, the broad picture first of all. So I'm actually going to go first to Ivaris um, Abramovich, uh, the Economic Development and Trade Minister. Let me uh, introduce him first of all, because I didn't earlier on uh, before he uh, arrived. Um, he is a Lithuanian uh, by birth, so uh, the second of the two non uh, Ukrainian uh, natives who um, uh, has taken up a ministerial role, started his career at Hansa Bank, uh, was head of trading at Brunswick Emerging Markets, and then was a partner at East Capital, uh, the Swedish asset management company that uh, specializes also in this part of the world, so someone else who knows this market very well. Um, Ivaris, let me ask you, first of all, I understand that uh, you have four key points I think we can't all speak at once, so uh, we have to do this sort of tag game here on the microphones. Um, four key points to your program, the first of which I, uh, I, I, let me ask you about is deregulation, um, uh, getting rid of uh, uh, some of these superfluous agencies and bodies that uh, seem to just get in the way of investors. The, tell us about uh, your activities in, in that area in terms of improving uh, the business climate. Uh, thank you very much. It, it's good to see so many people back uh, to Ukraine uh, looking at, invest at investments. Uh, it's quite common to see the usual suspects uh, sitting in the front row uh, and so on. Uh, there are a lot of uh, economic programs uh, in Ukraine and reform programs uh, in Ukraine. It's Strategy 2020, which was drafted by the presidential administration. Uh, it is uh, the so-called Groisman slash Balash plan uh, recovery of Ukraine 2015-2017. It's coalition agreement. It's uh, the program of the government uh, for 2015 uh, and so on. And uh, uh, Ministry of Economic Development has a pleasure uh, and an honor to coordinate all these documents uh, from time to time into a big document. So there is a 200-page document uh, in a small print uh, that will be submitted to the government uh, on Wednesday, uh, which is basically uh, outlines what we need to do uh, in 2015, which is absolutely in line with the coalition agreement. And half of the things uh, uh, are belonging to the Ministry of Economic uh, Development. Uh, so we have been really looking at how to uh, make uh, these uh, matrices sort of a into one a bit, and uh, quite a few of these things from now on will relate uh, very much to the IMF uh, memorandum uh, that uh, Natalie uh, has spoken of. Um, when it comes to IMF program, every ministry, and we have 18 ministries, had to come up with uh, two uh, important uh, reforms that we will undertake uh, uh, for every of the four years of the IMF program. So uh, we had uh, uh, really to come up with over 100 very important reforms. So as for Ministry of Economic Development, you rightly pointed out uh, uh, that deregulation is, is, is very important. Uh, State-owned enterprises, uh, the reform of state-owned enterprises, um, also uh, uh, state procurement, uh, we need to, to fix, uh, and also ministry in itself needs to be reorganized. We have, you know, lots of people working in it, 1,300, but under the ministry there is a lot of uh, different structures like uh, state uh, statistics department, 10,450 people, uh, state reserve, anywhere between four and 6,000 people. Uh, uh, in uh, Various uh, structures that relate to standardization and metrology. There is 50,000 people working in the country. Uh, we have th over 300 state-owned enterprises under the Ministry of Economy and uh, so on. In total, we have 1,900 uh, state-owned enterprises that are working, 3,374 in total. And it's going to be a huge reform, of course, because many of these companies are run as, uh, as private uh, uh, entities, but I'll get back to that a bit later. Just before this panel, I was a bit late because I, I met world leaders uh, in deregulation. They're called Jacobs, Cordova, and Associates. They did uh, the guillotine uh, thing in 15 countries and, and, and very successful in quite a few countries, including uh, Mexico. So here in the table, it says a uh, number of sort of a regulatory uh, 
uh, sort of acts in Ukraine. All other countries that uh, underwent this uh, reform, uh, you know, Mexico had 2,038, uh, Kenya 1,315, Ukraine 14,000. Uh, and uh, sort of the stage at where we are, because everyone in this country has been, you know, dealing with deregulation for 20 years. We have veterans of deregulation in this country. And uh, it says a uh, percentage of, of these uh, sort of acts uh, removed, 7.2%. Uh, 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 so we are really at the uh, very initial stage uh, of uh, uh, deregulation. Here we work uh, just like on many other re reforms uh, in the ministry with uh, various NGOs. Uh, so here we work with an NGO called uh, Easy Business. It's uh, 15 uh, uh, young uh, enthusiasts that have sort of gone uh, quite deep into uh, deregulation. And what we agreed is that our deregulation is going to consist of uh, three stages. Uh, stage one is uh, removing uh, access barriers uh, to do business. Uh, second uh, is going to involve the so-called guillotine approach, which these Cordoba guys have actually, you know, they have a trademark on, on, on the uh, regulatory guillotine, so we will have to call it something else, maybe bulldozer of the uh, regulation. And the third part is going to be uh, uh, creating uh, preventive mechanisms so that all these uh, agencies do not reappear under a different name, uh, you know, two months uh, down the road. Uh, so the first part is almost finished. Uh, last week we passed uh, a good law, uh, you know, removing uh, 16 different permits, you know, um, improving uh, uh, rental terms uh, for the agricultural land, which is very good for, for agri uh, companies, uh, reducing the uh, uh, number of days that it takes to register a company from five to two and many other things. Uh, three weeks ago we passed a government decree uh, that uh, simplifies also a lot of things for the agricultural sector primarily and uh, Alexei can talk more of that simple things like uh, quarantine certificates that are almost non-existent in the EU you know we would uh, we had um, them here if grain was transported in the same oblast from one rayon to another which is a complete nonsense and government was issuing licenses to these uh, people that were issuing certificates for almost at no cost. And then these guys were issuing these uh, certificates at about $1 per ton. So by removing the uh, requirement of these uh, quarantine certificates, we're bringing back about a billion grivena back to, to this sector. Uh, similar situation with uh, phytosanitarian uh, certificates. Used to be five days in the port that the ship waits and all these guys, of course, uh, you know, picking in their noses uh, and say we cannot speed it up unless, of course, uh, you use a middleman. Uh, so we reduce number of days uh, uh, from five to one. And we also calculated that it's about a billion grivena that we return back uh, to the agriculture sector. So um, uh, today we will have National Reform Council, which I uh, sort of uh, co-chair together with uh, uh, Dmitry Shimkiv from Presidential Administration, Hannah Hopko from the Parliament, and uh, we will discuss about four reform initiatives, three uh, related to Ministry of Economy, including deregulation, and there we will propose that the final stage of this first stage of deregulation will involve, you know, removing about 177 other different types of licenses and permits, uh, and so on, and then kickstart this guillotine approach. Guillotine approach is, makes things quicker, these 14,000 sort of things and uh, need to be removed. And instead of doing little by little, we estimated that the legal cost associated with it over the span of several years would be over $3 million if we use outside legal services. So of course you need to use some kind of really harsh mechanism. So we will most likely create an independent uh, uh, sort of a commission uh, in front of which the burden of proof will fall on these controlling uh, uh, sort of the agencies. They will have to prove that they, are, uh, they do not have any corruption element in it, they are in line with EU standards, and they are in line with uh, free market practices. So it's a work in progress. We have a certain success. Uh, everybody knows uh, who's from Ukraine about Ukraiko Resurse, and uh, uh, this is a sort of a, a utilization of packaging that does not uh, really take place. So only money is collected from importers, and I always ask associations, give me some another big ticket item to, to kind of shut down 
and everyone says, look at Eco Resources. So uh, let's see on Friday, hopefully, it's going to be on the governmental committee that we'll discuss because all the ministries already agreed that it's, it's a good thing to, to cut. If it happens, it's going to be another sort of a small victory uh, on the deregulation front. So I stop here. Thanks very much indeed, Ivaris. Um, uh, time is, is running away with us, so I'm going to um, uh, ask the audience uh, a couple of questions now uh, on what uh, you see as the priorities for the, uh, uh, the issues that Ukraine has to tackle. So please um, uh, take your um, voting, uh, voting devices. Uh, you have six choices there. Um, there seem to be one or two problems in the first uh, panel when these were being used. So wait until the voting opens. Uh, and when you've made your choice, um, press uh, just one of the six buttons while the 10-second countdown is going on, uh, and then hopefully that should uh, register it. So the first question is, and I should say that these, uh, the first two questions we're going to do right now uh, were also posed um, at this year's Ukrainian breakfast at Davos, uh, so we can compare uh, what you think with what people thought when they were asked these questions at Davos. Um, question number one, what issues does Ukraine have to tackle most urgently? A, uh, sorry, number one, uh, constitutional reform, including decentralization. Uh, B is corruption. C, inefficient public administration. D, the conflict in the East. E, improving communication abroad, or F, improving conditions for doing business. Uh, so when the countdown begins, please uh, make your choice, and the countdown is underway. You have 12 seconds, 10 seconds. Please all uh, make your choices now. Okay, we have the results. Um, we've still only got about a turnout of about half, which uh, is, is disappointing by electoral standards, but um, I'm hoping more of you will feel the urge to press the button next time. Anyway, from on that turnout, the, uh, the clear winner, uh, I think we could all have guessed, uh, is uh, corruption uh, as the most urgent issue um, with 32%. Uh, and the conflict in the East, uh, number two, with 14.5%. Um, just looking at what people said in Davos, uh, corruption was also number one there, but uh, with 56% of respondents saying that was the most important. Sorry? All right. Okay. So it's often vote. <laughs> Ivoris is telling me that to adjust the figure for the for the for the turnout and therefore actually the the the, uh, the percentage is, is of, of those voting is much higher and of course he's right, uh, which is why he's the economy minister and I'm just a <laughs> a humble journalist. Um, and the conflict in the east was also uh, second choice uh, on 14 percent at Davos. Okay, let's move on to the uh, second question. Uh, which is about Ukraine's international partners. What do Ukraine's international partners have to tackle most urgently? Choice A is provide financial assistance. Choice B, force Ukraine to enact reforms. C, keep pressure on Russia to solve the conflict. Uh, D, provide experts to reform the public administration and other areas. E, provide military assistance, and F, provide a more objective depiction of events in Ukraine. Okay, the countdown will start in a moment. As soon as it does, it's started now. Please make your choices. Ten seconds left. Okay, time is up. 
So the results uh, this time around, ah, interestingly, uh, uh, the most uh, popular answer here is that the international community should force Ukraine to enact reforms. I'm not quite sure how they force Ukraine to enact reforms, but I guess there is conditionality to the financial assistance. Strangely, providing financial assistance um, got less than 8%. Uh, was only in the third, uh, third place. Uh, and the second most important uh, here was uh, keeping pressure on Russia to solve the conflict. 16.5% of you uh, said that. When that was asked in the same question in Davos, they were able to make multiple choices there, so the figures aren't quite comparable. But um, uh, those first three answers were, again, the most popular, though in a slightly different uh, 